Hello, everyone. My name is Inora Gonzalez, and we are here uh, from um, in behalf of Dreamcatcher, which is um, a program for Native American women in different reservations um, to help them to become entrepreneurs. And it's a full program that we do it uh, here in Phoenix uh, with um, with Thunderbird faculty and also with um, in conjunction with ASU and our partners Freeport McMoran. Thank you everybody for being here. I know that this is um, a hard time and, and I appreciate uh, taking the time to be in here. Um, I wanna introduce April. April graduated from the program in the first cohort that we had. She is basically amazing. She's been doing this for a long time and um, I'm gonna hand it out to you, April. Please welcome everybody. Thank you, uh, Denora. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is April Tinhorn, and I own Tinhorn, uh, which is a company where we ignite Indigenous connections. And we've been doing that for close to a decade through our marketing, connecting, and training services. Uh, I come from the Wallapai Indian Reservation. Um, so just like many of, of your tribal communities, we're being affected as well. You know, our, um, our tourism for the Grand Canyon West it's been closed down and um, like real talk, we're living through a, a different time that I don't think many people have ever lived through before. Um, I, I think that today's topic about what your brand says about your business uh, without speaking a word is extremely relevant in our, our time now and moving forward. So, you know, if you think about traditional branding and networking and how we would get the word out about our business, um, for some of us who uh, went out and it was in person, you know, we're, we have to pause because that's not, has not been available to us. And we don't know how much longer we won't be able to do that. So just from one business owner to others, uh, I, would, I, I would like to share a conversation that I've had with, with others. And someone remarked um, to me like, oh, I can't wait until things get back to normal. And really think about that because how, how I did business prior to physical distancing, um, I, don't, I don't think we're going to be returning back to, to what that was. Um, and I think as business owners that we need to really pause and reflect on our current business and how, um, our di different models and even the services we offer because if we're banking on things going back to how they were I'm I'm uh, I'm really cautious about that because I don't think that um, normal or what we were before I don't think it exists anymore I think that more and more of whether we're a product-based business or service or combination that um, being online is, is is paramount to the to the survival and thriving of your companies. So, I'd like to share um, some some tips with you all. I'm going to go ahead and take the screen and have our little laptop here. And I will go ahead and. If you have questions, I definitely try to make it interactive. And if you have questions, we'll talk about it too at the end. So what does your brand say about your business and speak without saying a, a single word? And I chose that title because even if you haven't really done any, any online um, branding in terms of like having a website or having a social media presence, you'd be surprised because I'm, I'm pretty confident that there's information on the web about your business and yourself. So, so people are already forming opinions about your business, about you um, without having met you. And especially in these physical distancing times, there are definitely more eyes open, um, open and looking at our online um, platforms. So I think for, especially like, uh, uh, like reservation based businesses where I've, I've heard because that's how I started my company. I started it um, in Peach Springs on the Wall of Pires for almost two years and did have um, internet problems, but for the most part, I could still you know, do my website business at that time. But I know one thing I've heard for reservation-based um, companies is that they'll talk about how there's this unequal footing, but I think with now the physical distancing, it, it, it allows everybody to be 
of their best marketer. And I think we have some opportunities here. Mm -hmm. With that being said, um, um, amongst, amongst the attendees here, what does brand mean to you? You can go ahead and unmute yourself, or if you're not comfortable, you can uh, type it in the chat box. And Dinar, if you could, you know, you could read that. So since uh, I see Jeff on here, I'm going to pick on you, Jeff. What does brand mean to you? Sorry, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, yes, I can. Thank you. Uh, I think I think brand is how people feel about your company. Yep, that's definitely a part of it. The feelings, I, I like that. The customer experience. Um, who else would like to share what brand means to you? Um, good afternoon. This is Cheryl. Owen. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Hi. I can. Um, I feel like brand is like. Um, from traditional perspective, like your clans or your groups that you belong to. And so if you identify with that, then you people kind of already have an idea of what your, you your personality that. would be like, or your, what you represent. Thank you, Thank you Sherilyn and Jeff. I, I agree with both of those. Um, I just generically like to say that a brand of my company is simply the identity of my company. And so let's keep moving here. So when we're talking about, oh, it's brand reputation or your identity. So when we're looking at two different um, brands, there's like the cyber brand and then the in-person brand. And we'll be looking at um, all two areas. And I'm um, differentiating between your cyber brand in terms of what's uh, there on social media. And I'd also like to talk about emails because I don't know um, by raise of hand, how many of you are sending more emails during this physical distancing time? I am, um, I'm using constant contact more. I've been paying for it in my business for years and maybe send out, um, you know, a blog notice or something every couple of months. But since this um, social distancing time, I've really been thinking about how can I still reach uh, my current clients to, you know, have that, that personal touch with them, but also to potential clients. And so I've been uh, using email blast and right now I'm using constant contact but I'm not sold on that as a tool maybe evaluating um, for people here on the call what are you using for your um, your email email blasting tools April this is Jackie I'm uh -huh. not using a lot of emails um, I'm mainly using social media so if I do like today is national cherry cheesecake day I just did a quick post and then I do my ripple, um, which is R-I-P-L. And then I do, and I post that to Facebook and I post that to Instagram. So if usually people want to order, they usually message me or call me. Um, it's very rare that I get an email request for uh, a cake. Okay, do you um, utilize email in your business? I do, it's I need sugar at yahoo.com. Okay, um, I, I, can, I can share with my business that when I post, I notice when I post on um, Facebook or when I post on Instagram and definitely when I post on LinkedIn, I get a different response from different audiences um, and then different types of people. Um, I also notice for me when I, when I um, email through constant contact, I, for the business sense, like for registration of webinars, because we, we have a Friday webinar that we do at Tinhorn, that I get, I'm having better luck, or I should say there's been more registrations for my webinars from our email campaign than from our social campaign. And it's interesting because it gets shared and liked, but when we think about like calls to action, and actually completing the action part of what we're requesting. So I'm requesting people to sign up for my webinar. And the reason I, I make them do that is because I'm cap I want to capture um, their names, 
their titles, and their emails so I can continue to have a dialogue with them. Um, and that, you know, that helps with um, ultimately sales. Um, but thank you for sharing what, um, what's working for you in, in your, your business, Jackie. Thank you. And, this, and I'm sharing from my perspective, you know, you can, I always say, take what works for you and you can leave the rest. Uh, we also will be talking, depending on time, about in-person etiquette. So let's, let's keep it rolling. So who here uses social media? Raise your hands. I do. All right. <laughs> and I'm looking through the, the list here. Okay. How about you, Larry? Okay, maybe can't use your uh, mic. But I, I wanted to share also um, seven online branding do's and then I'll share some don'ts. So again, knowing that people are, are online for more hours, um, we, we as business owners, we need to utilize that captive audience. And what a, you know, we're talking about brand, but I'd also like you to think further about what do you want people to know about your company? So let's start with the baseline. So we want to put our best foot forward. And that begins with using professional headshots. So there's a difference between your personal social media and then your professional social media. So for instance, I have um, April Tinhorn accounts on all three platforms I mentioned prior to um, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I also have um, professional accounts for my business, Tinhorn Consulting. And I use my logo for the professional uh, or for my business social media. And I try to use more professional images when I have them available. But again, reality check, we're in the time of phys physical distancing, right? So if you don't have a handy professional headshot, um, Actually, if you don't mind me um, tapping on you, Jeff, just because I know you're also a photographer, would you mind um, sharing with us what we could perhaps some tips of what we can do when we, mm. if we don't have a professional, you know, if we need to take a professional headshot of ourselves during this physical distancing time? Hey, just in time, I just got finished eating, which is why you only saw my photo. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for having me. I'm the only guy. Um, <laughs> um, but I did clear it with the project that this is for anybody interested in the topic. But anyway, um, so I'm, I actually come from an acting background. So I have, um, when it comes to headshots, I have more of that uh, experience behind me. But in this day and age with the type of uh, cameras, even cell phones that we have, especially the newer ones that do portrait mode to mm -hmm. make you look good, it's pretty simple to get a good photo of yourself. Um, I wonder if I can pull up, uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Um, I would suggest, of course, um, go to Res, because <laughs> this year they actually had a professional photographer there giving out free headshots. Anyway, but that's beside the point. Um, it, it went over really well, so I'm sure they'll have it next year again. Um, so we had just lines of people lined up to get that. Um, Actually, I was asking for tips, Jeff, like, you know, maybe colors or backgrounds, patterns, well, those types of things, if we're taking it ourselves. If you're taking it yourselves, just make sure there is a clear background. Um, set yourself, um, distance yourself from that background. Usually it's a white, but it doesn't have to be white. I prefer not white, um, something more in the gray tones. Um, uh, behind you, um, make, sure well with our well. skin. make sure it's yeah, make sure it's evenly lit. Um, but you know, make sure you're lit um, brighter than what you see in the background. Um, otherwise, just smile, take <laughs> the digital shots, you can take as many as you want until you're happy. Um, but I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. I, I, I would strongly suggest that you just go the professional route and have someone take it for you, you get a professional look. But um, it's pretty simple to yeah, do it right. at, at yeah. home yourself, though. Good deal. I agree with you during normal times, but I'm just thinking like after this, uh, after taking this uh, little webinar, if that's something we'd want to do. Um, what I heard the takeaways were is lighting matters. You need I need to be brighter than my background. And he said something like grayish tone. So 
that would that would get us through the pandemic time jeff you think i think so yeah thank you i appreciate you jumping on um, sure sure Good deal. really really quick i'm not sure if you can see this can you see this no. photo that photo <laughs> no you're not able to share um share the oh, i'm not right oh now. okay all right sorry no Go ahead. thank you jeff um, also, I would suggest um, going back to our online branding dues is to Google your company name. So let's jump out of here. Oops. Well, you can actually Google your company name and I'm all trying to get out of and show. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and Google who would like to uh, give me their company name. I'm afraid to. <laughs> All right, we'll start with uh, mine first. Then. <laughs> you can do mine though, if you don't want to do yours. Mine is Sky, like, Bear, Sky Bear Media. I'll do yours next. So okay. just type in Tinhorn Consulting. This is Google or it could be Bing or Yahoo, any search tool. And you'll notice um, within Google, it has my company name. It says there's 68 views in the last 28 days. Um, more importantly, we're gonna wanna focus as business owners what's on this right-hand column. So you'll notice that it has uh, for my Google ranking, which is going to affect the, um, the search engine optimization rankings of where my, where my things show up um, or my hits is I have a 4.0. Uh, I'd really like to share this as a personal experience um, that happened. So I never really paid attention to Google um, in terms of reviews, but I got uh, a review by somebody who I, I did not know. They weren't a client and they gave me a one star and that brought my Google ranking to like, a, I think a two. Um, and so that when I was in an SEO class and they said that affects um, how the results, Google results will show anything for Tinhorn Consulting. So I started asking um, a couple of people that were in classes if they would give a, a review um, to pull up my stars. And what I found out, I went and clicked on the user who gave me a one star who I don't know who they are. You know, being a native woman, I did my research. I went on Facebook and I, and I found out we have one, one friend in common, but I still don't have a way to contact that person um, because um, and doing looking at Google reviews is um, as a business owner, you cannot remove a review. Uh, you cannot request, you can request that Google removes it, that this person never did business, business with Tinhorn, but um, Google will not, will not change any, any reviews. So just keep that in mind. Um, next, uh, this one makes me feel better. So it says from reviews from the web, you know, 4.9 out of five from Facebook. Um, this is the one sounded like a zombie answered the phone. That was, that was the one star review. <laughs> and I, and I try to be humorous because I always say, you know, no matter what the reviews are positive or negative as business owners, um, already start thinking about your, what your strategy is going to be for a, um, a review that is negative, whether it is based on fact or whether it's an opinion. Um, I, I choose to um, acknowledge all my reviews. Um, some people will like delete, say like a, a negative comment on Facebook. I try to uh, acknowledge it and do it with humor. So like on this, this review, I wrote back, um, okay, if zombies aren't your thing, how can we help you? And still no response, but I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said more like push the inclusive or diversity angle. Yeah, we hire zombies. <laughs> right? Yeah. And there's some other responses, right? Have fun with it. Um, and if we move over to the left hand side of our Google reviews, and this is again, if you didn't you never knew who Tinhorn was and you Googled, this is this is what this is um what's being said about my brand without ever meeting uh, myself or doing work with my company, right? This is the whole uh, without a word ever being said. So you can see that Tinhorn, um, uh, that my website came up, that my company's Facebook page came up, that, uh, let's see, there's LinkedIn information. 
there's our videos um, on YouTube and Facebook that also came up. Uh, we're listed in the Chandler Chamber of Commerce. We have a Yelp. Uh, we're also on Yelp. Uh, we're on ICANN Wiki, Owler, and Nabo. So those are those are pretty pretty accurate um, reviews. So let's go ahead and see. We had from the audience. He said Sky Bear. Sky Bear Media. Three words. Thank you. With the animal. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm, I'm excited to see what comes up. Ooh, look at Sky Bear's got a five star. That's a that's great rating. Woohoo! We've got 10 Google reviews. Look at that. Yep, and they also have a five out of five on Facebook. So Sky Bear has great, uh, great online word of mouth. <laughs> Three profiles on Instagram and other things. This is a good one too, if you want to start perhaps seeing who your competitors may be. Look what Google listed. People also search for Turning Leaf Production, uh, Partiman Production, Inventive Pictures. Yeah. Do you know who they are, those companies? Yeah, the first two have been around for a long time. Um, the other ones, not so much, or they have, but they're not as good. Mm -hmm. um, I would say Turning Leaf and Partiman are our usual, our local, uh, uh, what do you call it? Your competitor? competitor competitors yes and so if you um i would i would recommend if you're not sure who your competitors are well google can pull them out for you and let you know at least from their algorithms who and i guess i would assume this is um when people are doing search pro for probably the types of products or services that your company provides these are the other companies that that have um a, a top listing and you get to again if we we didn't know sky bear media their website comes up. Um, they're on Vimeo, Facebook, uh, BBB, but, ooh, B Better Business Bureau, um, Yelp, LinkedIn, Twitter, Square, Instagram, uh, Clutch. So just some some things to consider. And I'm, I'm glad we had a great example here. Thank you, Sky Bear Media. Thank you. And I would, I would um, suggest other folks to do the same for your company. Okay, next I would say to share the positive things that your business does. As uh, natives, I know a lot of times we're, um, we're taught, you know, not, not, to, not to brag. It's not about the self, it's about the collective whole. But this is different. It's, it's not April, it's Tinhorn Consulting that we're talking about. So it's not about you, it's about your company. And I would I would encourage you to share all the positive things that your business does. Like I saw, uh, was it Jackie was on here and on social, I know I saw that her company, I Need Sugar, went and received a, you received a, an award, right? An SBDC or an SBA award? Um, yeah, from the governor. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so I would be, uh, if you haven't, I would make sure you have that on your website. I would put it all over your social, um, get some mileage out of it because um, we, we need to, when it comes from other people, it's one thing to say like, um, uh, Tin Horn is the best company, uh, best uh, marketing company in Indian country, right? But if it comes from say, like the American Indian Chamber of Commerce saying I'm business of the year, that holds a lot more weight than it does for me tooting my own company's horn. So that's, that's what it is, is we, we buy from other people. Um, another tip I would give you is um, to set up a Google alert on your company name. And so, and I would also say to put it on your personal name. And if you know the different categories of services or products that your business provides, I would put that down. And now that we saw too, that Google gives your competitors, I, I'm gonna set an alert on who my competition is and what that does is Google, Google's um, web crawler is always cruising through the web and it's, you know, like indexing things. And so when you have a Google alert on um, maybe Native American web developer, anytime it, it's, as it's crawling and it sees it, it's going to send um, an email to my email account with a link. And that way it helps me keep up on what's going on. Minimally, it'll let you, that, that is actually how I found out about the, the negative review that I got for my company. Um, and then it's interesting during these, these pandemic times is I've been getting more alerts 
about the, um, the webinar that we've been doing every Friday. So that's been cool. Um, of everyone on here, uh, who, who has a Google alert set on their, their business name or themselves? I'm not sure if I do. I, I think at one point we set it up, but I don't remember. Um, would that be getting an email saying that somebody has Googled you or something like that? No. It's no. Only, it's not if they Googled you. It's more like, um, like say, um, say if a news uh, newspaper did an article and your your company was mentioned in it, it'll send you a link. It, it but it would have to be a link to it. It's always a link to somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. Maybe I have not done that then. So something I have to look into. Thanks. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. I'm helping. Um, Google can be our other eyes for our companies to see April, what. Yes. I have a, um, a question. Sure. Can you go over to any SEO strategies or how SEO actually helps your company to come up in the top when you use Google? I can generally speak about that. Let's go back to our. Or oh, just explain what it SEO is, because like a lot of people, they don't even understand how Google uses certain words in order to keep you on the top. Okay, so if, we, if we've all, everyone's done a, a search, right, in Google or Yahoo or Bing, and it's basically I'm a user and I'm looking for something, and what I type in here, that is um, keywords, and so say I want to get, um, is there any? I wanted to make sure, let's use another example. Um, Sherilyn, do you have a business? Um, yes, it's Coffee Pot Farms. Okay, so are you, um, what type of a business do you have? Uh, we run a market farm. Okay. And we're doing that on um, Navajo. Great. And what area, what area are you in? Um, we are in Delcon. <laughs> So like Arizona? In Arizona. So let's say um, I wanted to go to a farmer's market in Arizona. And so the what I typed in here are my keywords. And this is just me trying to find somebody. And so on one, on one hand, we have, um, ha did you ever wonder how these different results come up? So it's part of it is based on, on your, is on Google has algorithms that nobody knows what the algorithms are. People will say they, you know, it changes all the time. Um, the, nobody ever knows what the exact sauce is for getting your company listed at the top. But you want to think about um, for like, did I even use that right? Is it farmer's market or what is that the term you would use, um, Sherilyn? <laughs> oh, yes, you can use that. Okay. So um that was me not being familiar with the industry and i use farmers market so if you would like your web do you have a business website not at this time okay so then let's uh first thing okay so first thing we need a website um <laughs> and i know there's a lot of specials going on during this quarantine time um and i even think uh change labs have you heard of them sherilyn yes i have I think they have resources to help as well to, um, you know, at least do a starter website. And if not, um, my company does websites as well. But um, so once you create your website and you start putting in your content or your text, if you know that people, one of the terms people are gonna use to find you, you wanna start putting farmer's market in um, throughout the text on your page. And it's kind of like almost real estate, your web page where different areas have higher value and lower value areas. So if you have farmer's market in your title, like the, the actual title of your website, um, that has a higher real estate or value for when Google looks things up. And then if at the top of your page, they call them like heading ones, that has um, a next higher value. And then uh, in the content, it's lower value that you have it listed, but if if you say that you do, you know, you're at a farmer's market or that's the type of industry you're in, it should be in content throughout your, um, your website because that's the more occurrences it has a farmer's market, it does affect 
a, a higher search engine ranking, but then you don't want to go so overboard that it's like in every paragraph because those um, Google's Google's um, the algorithm is smart enough to see they call it like um, search term stuffing. So like if you have too many farmers markets in there to try to create boost your ranking, it, it also knows that. So there's this perfect balance that changes all the time. Um, other things that help raise your search engine ranking so that you can be one of the results that are up here at the top is um, get, other, get other websites to link to your website. So like Jeff, I would say, hey, Sky Bear Media, like link, link to Tinhorn Consulting and we'll link back to you. And that's gonna help both of our websites to come up higher in our respective rankings. Um, even social media, like with you being uh, with the web, your website URLs um, and your, even having a social media page um, that has the same website listed in the about that helps with your, with your ranking. Um, big level picture is like the more people that aren't you that are talking about your business, it's going to help your rankings. And that's why it matters to be active on social. It matters to do podcasts, to do blogs, um, to do you know webinars because you're you're always pumping out fresh content that comes from that company, and that will boost your rankings. And reviews also affect it as well. And just really quick, um, you'll see here a lot of times you would see something that says "add" at the top, and that's if you've ever been hit with to pay for your, your ranking, they'll be at the top, but a lot, a lot of times it'll say add, and you can tell they call this an organic ranking. And so this Arizona community farmers market.com, they're the first listing. And because there's no ad written here, you know that they, they received that ranking because of what they've organically done. They didn't pay for ads to be here. Um, I hope that helps start the um, the conversation, Dinora. Yes. So what Thank you were you. thinking about. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. So next, uh, let's see, this number five, display recommendations on your profile. So um, Jeff, in Jeff's example with Sky Bear Media, he has 10, I think he had 10 Google um, recommendations. Um, Jeff, do you have those? Rep recommendations as testimonials like on your web on your company website on your social media profiles um we used to but we don't have it anymore we've changed our website a couple times um kind of making it um, more simple mm -hmm. less cluttered and we so we took them off um i'm not sure if that was a good move or not but we did at one point I, I would um, recommend at least putting the, the stellar ones, a one or two, if you still want it to be a really clean, a clean yeah. one. and thinking about your target um, market, who of those 10 would have the most um, authority, like their words would mean the most to your potential clients. Because again, it goes back to like, okay, April's the best marketing agency in any country. But if it's like, um, I don't know, the National Center or San, San Juan Manuel Band of, of uh, Indians, and I had a review from one of them, that would hold a lot more weight than me just saying it myself. Yeah. So that would be my fifth tip. Let's see, the seventh award, uh, sorry, the fifth one would be display awards and accolades on your timeline. And the sixth would be to interact with the public on your social media channels in a positive manner. So. Um, it almost, I would say it almost hurts your business more to have, have a social media account that you never respond to. Like it, you, it's, it's up there, but you don't have any content or it's back from 2014 and someone uh, posted something and, and you never wrote back. That is actually more detrimental to your company than having no account. So that goes back, back to what what you're able to do if you're um, if you honestly can only handle one account to do well um, I would say just be on one one platform and be interactive um, again people um, when you get posts or people get shares I would say that's that's opportunities to to interact with them and that's that's the beginning of relationships and 
you know, we buy, we buy from people, right, that we know. So that's always an opportunity to, um, that I would recommend following up on. Um, I spoke about this a little bit earlier, but already start thinking about when, when there's a negative post, whether it's true or not, how are you going to handle that? Because you have the ability to delete those comments. Um, you have the ability to, um, you know, go toe to toe or like Jeff was just saying, you know, to like almost embrace what they said and, and, uh, or, you know, for mine, maybe deflect, just think about how you want to handle that and keep in mind that that's, um, that should be authentic to your brand. So for my company, we're pretty personable and humorous, but I know there are other companies that are very professional. And so thinking about that in the language you use, whether you use emojis, um, if you're going to use any humor um, in your postings, just to keep that in mind. And uh, if you wanna even talk about the power of media, like let's go, let's go um, and look right now, like uh, what Ruth Chris is getting hit hard because um, from the public opinion because they they were one of the huge companies that were um, that received some of the uh, pandemic loans made available through the SBA they got like what 20 million and it's meant for small businesses and if you if you look on your feeds or even google it there's been so much backlash for like them and was it potbelly and there were some other major retailers that did get those small business loans and so far I saw Ruth, Ruth Chris has returned their 20 million in loans. And that goes back to just people, you know, the backlash. So it, it matters. Um, the last thing I would say um, for a do about online branding is to start building your following. It's extremely important in, in today's time because before, like just in the beginning of March, you know, um, I, I know I saw Jeff there. We were at Reservation Economic Summit. It's somewhere where you you know we could we could um, network for our businesses in person, but that's not available today. We we our new playground is is online, online or you know there's it's not all just online. We can still if it works for your your potential clients, there's still mailers, you know there's still phone calling, there's texting, but whatever you do, I would say start building your following now. Uh, I have a, I have a question on that. Sure. Is there like a certain number of people that you're, that we're trying to reach, um, like through social media, the different, is there targets that we, are goals that we should try to um, reach? I would say that would be a business decision, like um, for, I'd say for Tin Horn, in the beginning, all I wanted was, you know, like in the first year, all I wanted was to get a certain number of, of likes and followers. Um, and a part of that is for like Facebook, I think you need at least 25 followers to your professional account before you can customize your URL. You know, if not, it's like facebook.com slash 98, 74, 76, whatever. But once you get, I think over 25 followers, then you can change that 98, 76, 74 to Tin Horn Consulting. And that's to help with your, your brand. Um, I believe um, Insta Instagram may be the same way. I think all of the social media accounts, you have to have a minimum number of followers before you can change from numbers to like your custom, um, your custom uh, handle. And then from there, I would say it's, it's uh, your choice as the owner, whether it makes sense for you and your marketing efforts, which also eventually leads to your sales. It's like, do you want a lot of people who know about your company or would you rather have people who are, are going to become your customers following you? Um, that's, that's what I'm, I'm learning in the nine years is that certain segments that I grew on say Facebook doesn't translate to sales for me, although it's the biggest following Tinhorn has versus like LinkedIn maybe small a smaller following but they're all my targeted audience so i would give i would give thought to to what you're using your social media for to then influence how you want to move forward with it and if uh, you have further questions uh, I'll, I'll definitely hit me up we could talk about it a little more um thanks sherilyn for the question 
So mm-hmm. as far as some online branding don'ts, I would say, the first thing I would say is don't complain. It's not your personal account. <laughs> you know, um, this, again, you're representing your business. You're not, I'm not, you know, Tinhorn Consulting's um, Facebook page. It's not April, it's Tinhorn Consulting. So um, don't complain, you know, go do that in person with someone, you know, you trust. Um, another thing would be even plagiarizing. Don't plagiarize. Like if you're if you're grabbing a meme from some, even something as simple as a meme, you're grabbing a video, you're sharing it from another source that it didn't come from you. Um, always, I, I would say it just is, is good uh, ethic to uh, cite the source, or it could be something as, as simple as like you know thank you thank you Sherilyn for you know for this uh, recipe on how to grow. Um, mint in your home and then I could you know forward Mm -hmm. repost what you had posted on your social and I I think that's also a part of of building relationships Um, another thing would be I wouldn't use improper grammar um, because a lot of you know they're they're sort of like the spelling police you know no matter what we're reading and I think the takeaway for a lot of people is is that if I don't care enough to you know spell check what I'm posting then Am I going to really care enough about the work they may hire me for? It's just, again, part of your, your brand. And how many of you have followed different businesses online and every post is about them selling something, you know, like buy our websites, you know, buy, buy my, my zucchinis, buy, 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 buy. And there's never anything about like creating a relationship or sharing um, the brand of, of Tinhorn. And I think that uh, it, it's not, it's kind of like the online version of telemarketing, I feel. And people don't respond well to that because we're online and it's to build relationships. I have a, I have a question sure. or a comment. I don't know what, what it is. Um, so, I mean, we're talking about what we look like online and we're talking specifically about our businesses. Um, and what our businesses look like online, but we're also online personally. Mm-hmm. And there's no disconnection between the two. And that's something I've been thinking about lately because I am not the, um, the you know, I, I'm not as uh, political, I guess, when it comes to, well, right now there's a lot of politics going on. There's the Trump people, there's the anti-Trump people, there's the election and all these things and I realize that I'm starting to I get into the you know I get into it too much um, personally on my personal page and but one thing I do is that when I do look at a company I always see the company read who they are what they do but then I also pick each person and and go look them up on Facebook and see what they really are like Mm -hmm. Um, and that scares me because that makes me wonder you know, what am I doing on my personal pages that it might be affecting my company in a negative way? And I, and I think uh, you may have answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's, I, it's scary. And I, I don't want to give up my ability to be me on my personal sites. But at the same time, it's, you know, if I want to appeal to all people, I have to become a different person online. And that's what's I don't like. There's, um, I guess there's a couple of ways to slice that. Um, one could be to um, look at your security setting that you have on your personal accounts. Um, you know, not to say that someone couldn't always take a screenshot and then post it right online. And, and the other thing is even when we delete something, remember it lives forever. Because even though uh, I may have deleted those 1992 girls weekend in Vegas photos out there now that I'm a mom and a business owner they lived on I'm sure they're somewhere they're they're somewhere <laughs> yeah and that's why I almost I almost take the attitude that you know it's and it's it's me I did it I I have to own that and just go on you know mm-hmm. if, if there are certain people that cannot accept you know I guess the faults I've had Mm -hmm. Um, not that I have a whole lot, not that I'm saying I don't, (laughs) um, you know, that's why I don't really check the settings. That's why I still say what I want, Mm -hmm. but I don't know. I have to think about other people now too. And the people that, you know, work for me or, you know, Mm -hmm. all that. 
Well, I, I, I would say that uh, another way to slice it is that um, I think when we talk about brand, a big part of that is being authentic. And so for my business, because I, I definitely have, uh, I'm a, a social, a social um, entrepreneur. And so I do have values and I do make stands on certain issues. Like I won't do business with anyone who is exploiting women, period. Like that's, that's a no brainer for me. And so I figure that if there's a company that wanted to do business and then they see like on my page, they, hey, there's something about MMIW, you know, murc murdered missing and indigenous women and that turns them off. I think that's a blessing. That's a part of the um, self um, weeding because we don't have similar values. And I think it, it's a, each company's decision, but I really believe that the more authentic we are in our business, it's going to attract the type of customer that, ha that is looking for us. So I know I've been told before that um, when I first started, because usually, you know, pre-pandemic, I usually have like a faux hawk or I have bright pink hair. And I've been told by other folks like, oh, that's really off-putting to like larger corporations or even one person, he, he walked by and then he came back and he goes, um, you might not want to do that. I think you're losing business. And I had to really sit in that for a while. And wow. I was, mm -hmm. and I had to sit in that for a while. But what, what the business decision for me was, is that that isn't my ideal client because I'm not looking to try to grab everybody. And you did mention that in the beginning, I wanted to mention, uh, Jeff, as you said, you were trying to appeal to everybody. And I think that's a hard thing to do. And I, I don't think it's actually worth it either. Like, um, I, I know for me, like, hard, I've had a couple of clients where it's really oh. difficult to work with them. And I think a lot of it has to do with that we really weren't aligned, like the type of company they wanted. It wasn't the type of company that I have. And so in the end, I, I think that I would rather work with clients that are in alignment and our missions are in alignment, if that helps something to think about. All right. Yeah. And next we have, uh, let's see. Also, okay, going back to um, texting language, don't use texting language, you know, like uh, on your company, your company profiles, like LOLs, or that's fine for your personal accounts. But again, we're representing our company. Um, also, and this might, uh, you know, posting tasteless comments, that's up to the individual owner. But again, going back to um, that everything we post online lives on forever, you know, keep that in mind. Like if I were talking to my younger uh, 20 something year old or 30 year old self, I would probably say like, you probably shouldn't have posted those Vegas pictures, you know, at two in the morning, but it, it was who I was, um, they're out there. Um, I also, and just, to defend that kind of comment, it's just like back in the day, it wasn't like it is now. I mean, social media was kind of like the fun thing. And, you yes, know, it was, just, it was just with your friends. It, it was not necessarily your business persona. It was everything about like having fun. And that is not the case anymore. Yeah. And then um, thinking about your target audience and also your company um, missions. Um, I, I would say for my company, since I work predominantly with tribal communities, because I've been in business settings, you know, where there's alcohol, it's a mix, it's a mixer, that's how business is done, right? But then I also have to think about, well, who is my target audience? And I know, for me, and the experience I have is like, I just have chosen, I don't want on my uh, business page, not to post things with alcohol, because that, that is a, a, a divider for my, my clientele. Um, also, not to mock your customers and comments. And also, please don't constantly rant. How are we on time? Are we almost near the end? Okay. Well, then uh, maybe maybe I think this will be the, the wrap-up portion. We didn't get to hit uh, email etiquette, uh, but I wanted to, let me just share something really quick. I'll just tell you like here um, for professional emails, definitely no textured 
or colored backgrounds, especially because there can be people who have um, the color blindness, so they might not be able to see it. And plus, it doesn't look um, professional. Again, the texting with like emojis, don't do that in your business emails. And uh, another thing is, uh, please don't do all caps. Some, some po folks will interpret that as yelling. So it's up to you if you want to emphasize something, but this is all in caps. So I would not recommend it. Uh, on this example, I wanted to point, at, point out some tips was that we have in the subject line, since our inboxes are inundated with so many emails, if you can, just think like, well, what, what am I asking? If you know like you want to request the status of something, or if you know you're looking for an approval on a budget, let them know. So like when they, they are scrolling and they see on the status, like, okay, this is they're requesting my status. Um, also going back to etiquette, you know, having a greeting and a closing remark. Um, a lot of times that's lost nowadays, but I would say to make your email stand out, put a greeting and have a closing. Um, also, it helps for people as they're getting tons of email. If you straight up say like the per what is the purpose of your email, and make it easy for folks to contact you. Um, I get a lot of emails that don't have phone numbers, or um, I I notice people don't put mailing addresses anymore. Um, but I I find that helpful um, to have it on there. But it's your choice, um, and you can also use this area to. Um, advertise um, maybe a free consultation or you know like the happy cherry cheesecake day you could put something there and for your etiquette tips for email just try to make your messages really simple and clear try to be timely on the responses I know that's hard when we're running businesses but if someone sent you an email they're they're probably waiting for for something from you and even if it's just to say like hey I read your email um, I'll, I'll get back to it, you know, on Tuesday, but at least they know, like, okay, I'm not going to hear back from them until Tuesday. Uh, we talked about the polite greetings and closing. Remember, we need to use our proper grammar and spelling and punctuations. No shouting, no all caps. Uh, for no special backgrounds, try to be clear in the subject. Include a proper signature field. Uh, oh, okay, this goes back to typing. Um, who remembers CC? CC and BC, C. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so how, what do you put in a CC line? So we have our two line, which is who the email's going to, right? And then who would I put, like, what type of people would I put in the CC field? Oh, I put it in here. It's for, like, for your information. And then who knows um, what the BCC field of email is for? Or can give an example. I think a CC is more like everybody that's in the meeting that, um, so everybody's aware of who's going to get a copy. Mm -hmm. And then the BCC is more of like a manager that needs to be, no, you know, at least get the email, but doesn't need to be in that group. That is, um, yep, that is one use. Um, just know that anyone who's in the BCC that's blind copy and their emails aren't going to be shown. Um, so, for instance, say, like, um, after this training, say, Dinora was sending an email to all of us, like, sending the slides or something. Um, she probably would put everyone's email address in the BCC field because um, we don't, you know, maybe Jeff doesn't want us all to have his email address. Um, and that way, it goes to everybody, but we don't have everybody's email. And um, the CC is just, it's someone who should be, I, I always kind of took it, like, on a project, like maybe the two field is everyone on the project who's working together. And I might CC like my manager, just so like they know what's going on. But when I see my name in the CC field, that way I know it's, the email isn't really for me, but it's like a heads up or an FYI. So I thank you everybody for joining us today. Can I ask you just a really quick question? Sure. What's your stance on, uh, professional emails like jeff at skybearmedia.com versus jeffbearhan at gmail.com? I think that the at skybear.com is an actual business and I think that at gmail.com is a, a moonlighter. <laughs> Dang it. I don't like to hear that because I hate using my my professional email. It's, I'd rather use Google. 
So that's, but that is how, um, and I also know I was on a, um, a call with like PTAC where they were talking when you do federal contracts and they were saying that if you don't, if you respond to like a, a federal contract opportunity with a Gmail address, most of the PTAC officers don't even take that request seriously. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. How about for the rest of the call? Give Jesse. Um, this is, yeah, this is Cheryl. And right now I only have the Gmail. I mean, I might, what we, our business we started is fairly new. So we're still getting into creating websites, trying to figure out what we would put on there. I know we want to move towards um, more farmer's market and doing online sales there. So that's kind of in the process what I'm researching. Um, so right now we just have like Gmail accounts. Um, um, but, but then it feels like you said, it does feel like um, the Gmail is more like for personal use. And then if like what you have on the page here, your April at Tinhorn Consulting, that's more professional looking. So I know we would have to figure out how that would do, how we would go about doing that. Um, yeah, it just looks more professional. And I believe with um, Google, is it Google Business? Um, you can pay to have, it's still a Google account, but you pay like $10 a month or something to get the at whatever.com and then it won't be Gmail, but you're still reading it through your Gmail. Um, and then when you have your, you also, just so you know, if or maybe you already know this, Jeff, but um, you can pop your SkyBear email to your your um, Gmail inbox, so you can still yeah. read it there. Yeah, um, I, I do that um, with I. Well, I have Hotmail too. I use that. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm dating me, huh? <laughs> All right, you're at AOL.com email. <laughs> with links to my MySpace and then it goes to my. But I want to thank everybody for. For your interaction um, that I, I always that that's my in-person or online training format is I love I love for it to be interactive because I feel that way it's of more value to you I know that you had choices to be for this past hour and I appreciate you joining uh, Tinhorn and Project Dreamcatcher so thank you um, my contact information is here I, I always offer a mini like 15 minute consultation um, at no cost. So if there's anything you want to discuss, let me know. And thank you again, Denora and Project Dreamcatcher. For mm, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much uh, for you. joining. Um, and um, if anybody needs uh, some kind of like um, guidance in, in their business, April has the, her contact information right there. You can just like talk to her. She is great. She can help you with your business. And she's also very, um, very integrated with the community so she can uh, if you have um, an, a specific audience that you need to reach out to she, she's going to be able to help you and thank you so much april to, for being here today and we're going to continue with these webinars every thursday and uh, thank you everybody for spending time with us and i'll see you next week I'm thank, great. You. Thank, you. thank you thank you thanks tenor consulting <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hi, bear. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stop this.